Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Yours truly making here. Are you tired of your plain, uninspiring bedroom and looking for some fresh ideas? Join me as I take on the challenge of showcasing 10 awesome bedroom styles for your home to help you find the perfect one for you. Let's get started. You guys, a person spends an average time of seven to nine hours in bed or their bedroom each night. And not all of this is sleeping. You will spend over seven years in your life, just in your bedroom, either trying to sleep, trying to wake up, or just relaxing. It is safe to assume that your bed and bedroom are the most important room slash space in your house because the average human spends a third of their life in the bedroom. This makes it extremely important to have a bedroom which is relaxing, cozy, brings solitude, but somewhat stimulating. That can be a very difficult design balance to find. I hope I can help you here by breaking down different styles, see which one speaks to you, plus discussing colors of each style. Bohemian. Bohemianism is a social and cultural movement that was a way of life steering away from society's conventional norms and ways. It was used in the mid 19th century to describe non-traditional lifestyles, usually of artists, writers, musicians, wealthy intellects, and world travelers who didn't really have a stationary home and just bounce from place to place. Let's concentrate on the latter. I believe the perfect bohemian style represents world travel and many cultures. That Turkish or Moroccan rug, African statue, handmade pillow or throw or blanket from any part of the world, eclectic art found at the smallest, most quaint flea market, who knows where, artistic ceramics. You get the picture. Bohemian design also mimics the artistry of those who appreciate texture, patterns, colors, and motives of nature, meaning an array of different textures from plush to silk, mixture of patterns, and always an abundance of plants or botanical art. Now, for the types of furniture. Modern Bohemian is predominantly wicker, bamboo, rattan, or light to medium wood furniture. But don't forget, the Bohemian lifestyle originated in the 19th century. So if you want to, mix in antiques and darker wood furniture if you have a passion for that style. There is also a style referred to as Victorian Bohemian. The colors you need to concentrate on deep browns and greens because of the nod to nature. To balance the deep green, a deep rich red, eclectic blues that can be accentuated with fiery strong oranges. Okay, let's move on to wabi-sabi. Wabi-sabi is a whole Japanese philosophy and now interior design, which embraces the beauty of the ultimate natural and raw form, accentuating comfort and simplicity while accepting all imperfections and irregularities. Rules. Yeah, okay, I'm rolling my eyes because you guys know I hate that word when it comes to interior design, but I will respect it in this case because wabi-sabi is also a way of life philosophy. A room will only be furnished as necessary and will feature lots of open space that is supposed to make every room and work of art look bigger, more lighter and welcoming. So if you have limited space, that means a bed, a low bedside table with a simple light source, a simple bench or stool to sit on. Let's hope you have a built-in closet but if not, a simple rack for your clothes, 
storage underneath, and a simple screen in front, or very large, simple armoire. And lastly, one large piece of artwork. Wabi Sabi is an ultimate minimalist dream. The colors, we're gonna stay with basically soft neutrals, meaning beige, creams, grays, and soft browns. If color is used, mostly muted greens. Okay, let's move on to Scandinavian. Of course, originating in the Scandinavian countries, Sweden, Finland, Norway, and Denmark, it emerged in the 20th century simultaneously with the Bauhaus movement in Germany and the mid-century modern movement in the United States. Famous designers of that time, starting in the 1930s, who are not only connected to Scandinavian design, but also mid-century modern are Anna Jakobsen, Hans Wagner, Pavel Tunnel, Finn Juhl, Werner Panton, Paul Hinningsen, and Alva Alto. And it all formed from the father of Danish furniture design, Kache Klint. Defining elements and characteristics are functionality, clean lines, natural materials, neutral colors, natural light, quality craftsmanship, distinct textural elements, i.e. sheepskin rugs, mohair throws, pillows, etc., and always white or light neutral colored walls. And we all know IKEA, which was founded in Sweden to bring less expensive Scandinavian design to the masses. Great segue into mid-century modern. Actually, the name at the time, because for its time, it was a new modern contemporary look. You will understand why I say contemporary a little later. But now I prefer to call it mid-century vintage when I am working with clients. Why? If you are truly decorating with pieces of that time, then everything is vintage. Mid-century vintage. What I include is everything after Art Deco until late 1960s, early 1970s. After that was the postmodern area breaking away from that modern area. So German Bauhaus of the 1930s into the 1950s and 60s design. Mid-century design was the contra answer to Victorian, Golden Age, Jugendstil, as we call it here in Germany, and Art Deco, which all were very elaborate and decorative, but slowly simplifying over the decades. Mid-century incorporated exploring new materials, making things more sleek and functional with soft curbs, minimalist materials. Mid-century in the United States reared its head first after the Second World War. So historians give it the time era of 1945 to 1969. But this strive for simplicity started earlier in Germany with the Bauhaus philosophy, which did not get introduced to other countries until later, and why I define mid-century design as starting earlier. The same reason why Hollywood glamour of the 30s and 40s never surfaced in Germany. We all know why there was a divide between these two countries at that time. I don't believe I need to go in depth in mid-century vintage. You know a piece when you see it. And we know the designers of that time. First, all the Scandinavian designers, uh, which I have already mentioned, plus Marcel Breuer of the Bauhaus movement. Eileen Gray. Charles and Ray Eames. Florence Knoll, another German. George Nelson. Ero Sarinen, born in Finland.
are considered the groundbreakers of the mid-century design movement. Look also for pieces from these other designers, Harry Batoya. Ludwig Mies van der Rohe. And Paul Evans. Colors, we're sticking with beige, orange, ochre yellow, mustard, and browns. Okay, let's get into the glamour. This style I am splitting into two categories, antique vintage glamour and modern glamour. Let's be clear, I am not talking about the glam look of the 2010s, trying to wash that style out of its existence, just like my old shabby chic phase. No insult to shabby chic, but I did not live in some beachy LA cottage or English cottage, so it was so misplaced. But at the time, the only vintage and antique pieces that I could afford. But 2010s glam, like my mother always said, if you don't have anything nice to say, say nothing at all. Okay, antique vintage glamour is how you would imagine a Hollywood star or starlet living in the 1930s and 1940s in LA, New York, or a Paris apartment during the glitz and glamour of Hollywood's golden age when designers drew inspiration from Hollywood's iconic movie sets and lavish homes of the A-list celebrities. Vintage items and design, which still featured art deco patterns with clean geometric lines, mirrored and high gloss surfaces, luxurious fabrics from plush velvet to satin slash silk fabrics, large art and sculptures, gorgeous large chandeliers and a maximalist approach to decorative items. Modern glamour plays on the same aspects, but allows for mid-century sleek influence and especially Hollywood Regency revival pieces from the 70s to postmodern 80s pieces. You still need a mixture of plush to satin silk fabrics, for rugs next to a streamlined platform bed or modern canopy bed. Modern glamour also allows for a more minimalistic style. Remember, minimalist and maximalist are just sub divisions of every style. Even a style like Wabi Sabi, which leans minimalist, you can satisfy your maximalism with a gallery wall of collected art or that simple sideboard with an extensive collection displayed on it. I have taught you guys not to follow rules if they do not 100% fit your personal stuff, right? Okay, colors for glamour, both categories. The sky is the limit. From neutrals to jewel colors to black and white, the glamour spectrum is unlimited. These two styles have been popular, resulting in a revival and are still today very popular because they offer a timeless sense of elegance and luxury for modern homes. Their bold and opulent features can be incorporated into a variety of interior design styles. Okay, let's go to industrial. A design style that was influenced by the industrial revolution. From the noble look of warehouses, factories, and industrial spaces. The decor includes stripped down architectural details, i.e. the exposed steel columns and beams that were introduced uh, at the turn of the 20th century as new building techniques to get high-rise buildings, exposed brick, concrete, pipes, and wood. Everybody has in mind the typical New York loft, wide open spaces with no defined rooms, large multiple pane windows, and ultra high ceiling. But you can achieve this look for your bedroom without living in an old factory by just including some of these elements. Because of these elements, the style typically includes darker, though neutral color palettes such as white, black, gray, and brick red plus black or dark chrome metals to tie the look together. Decor, 
Think of leather or raw fabrics like burlap. Industrial can include all different types of furniture styles because industrial flair comes more from the architectural aspects as from the furniture. Okay, I must admit the next design styles are very often confusingly intertwined, traditional and contemporary. Both are seen as timeless and classic, but the true definition of traditional is a timeless style taking cues from the 18th and 19th centuries, incorporating classic art, antiques, and pieces of history. You mostly see traditional design influenced by old European decor, but can also include elements of the Far East and ancient cultures like Greek and Roman, because the Greek revival was very popular in the late 18th and early 19th centuries. Then the Neo-Romanesque revival, not to be confused, with the first Romanesque revival of the 11th and 12th centuries, but the Neo or modern Roman revival began in the middle 19th century. So homes at the time would have included these items also. Contemporary is also clean, timeless lines and decor. Minimalist, but can be a maximalist style, but everything of the current era, okay? Meaning time frame of this era, of the now, created in the last couple of years, nothing dated in any past, not even five years ago. Now you understand why I stated mid-century modern was modern contemporary at its time, but not anymore. But you don't have to go out and buy everything new. Just try to stick to streamlined, timeless furniture that no one could put a date on it. Then have your decor like lamps, vases, artwork, of the present time. Traditional and contemporary are the easiest styles, I believe, to mix. You can have completely contemporary furniture, but traditional decor in your art or artifacts. Okay, the colors. With traditional and contemporary style, the sky is the limit. It is up to you and your personal preference. But with minimalist contemporary, it does lean more neutral. Have your bold colors mainly in your contemporary art. Okay, let's go into modern, which can have many definitions, but I am going to divide this style, but let's first talk postmodern first, okay? Postmodern emerged in the late 1970s and in the 80s as design was evolving away from the sleek, clean lines of mid-century modern that had been dominant for so long. People wanted playful, colorful decor again, experimenting with odd shapes and very bright colors, brass, colored glass, fabrics like velvet, all made a comeback. The color, the more colorful, the better, and rich, strong colors, nothing too subdued. If you are going for yellow, then the loudest yellow you find. Oranges, turquoise, green, pink, blues, but you can also tone it down with different shades of neutrals, which might be better for a bedroom if you, you know, you do have to relax in there. Contemporary modern, mid-century modern, I have pretty much touched on. Having a very sleek, timeless current style is the contemporary modern as compared to having the modern look from the 50s, 60s, 70s. What colors for contemporary modern brown woods, beiges and neutrals, working in one or two colors of your choice. Black is often very dominant. Chrome is making a comeback. So it is in the now, contemporary. And I recommend definitely balancing the chrome with black metal and brass. Okay, we're getting close to the end. Let's break down academia, light and dark. Pretty self-explanatory. It is in the name, everything academic. Your room should look like a cross between an old library and an old European professor's office. Books galore, 
low multiple sources of lighting, including candles, old pictures of distinguished gentlemen or women in old wooden or golden frames, old scientific instruments like a microscope, scale or protractor. Go to flea markets or vintage markets and vintage shops and find something like you know when they have all those specimens of beetles or butterflies framed, things that an academic person would be studying. If you have the room, a desk is a must, just full of artifacts like the desk of a chaotic professor, papers and letters, an antique envelope opener, antique rugs, play with different strong textiles like velvet, tweed, or mohair. Like academia, you are going to have cream or off-white colored walls, furniture, and decor. Dark, your walls and decor are going to be black, off black, deep navy, deep purple. Both styles are going to include dark woods and with dark academia, the use of even black lacquered wood is good. And lastly, grand millennial, granny chic, or what I like to call modern Victoria. If you like lots of delicate details, florals, feminine silhouettes in your furniture, this is a style for you. Plush furniture, but with fringes like grandma had, antiques from the turn of the 20th century, lace, crochet items, scallop pillows, very decorative lamps. Many mixed patterns that stain in the floral or botanical realm. And with this style, wallpaper is a must, with small, not too large of a format of delicate floral pattern. If you are a flea market, vintage market, estate sales, or goodwill stand, this is one of the styles that can be achieved with such a small budget or really for free. Go around a grandmother's house, grandparents of friends, great aunts, etc. They will usually just give you things or DIYs, learn to crochet, glue some fringe or string some beads on an otherwise plain lampshade to create these looks. So fringe yourself around the edge of your bed blanket. And as for color, the more the merrier from pastel shades to jeweled colors. Okay guys. <laughs> I hope I explained everything very well, but if you still have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask down in the comments below. If you would like further guidance in combining two styles again, just ask. Better yet, let me know which ones and I will do a whole video about it. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out with me. And as always, yours truly, Heart Megan. Gorgeous, large, sat gorgeous, Gorgeous. Why can't I say gorgeous all the time? Gorgeous. 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 Large. I'm still not saying it right. Or is it just in my brain that sounds funny? Gorgeous.